What's up guys, CP Money here, back with another video. Now recently, in fact, I think it was about last week, I released a video where we did some myths about power supplies. And while we're continuing them this week with the myths that are more related to your PC cooling solutions, as definitely there are a lot out there when it comes to PC cooling. So today we're gonna address a couple of them that I do here all the time, in no real particular order, but they are definitely some stuff from the water cooling side, but also too from the air cooling side. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first myth that I hear all the time is top fans must always be exhaust. Now the idea of this stems from a lot of case manufacturers including this kind of an image where they show well hot air coming out the back and also to the top where a lot of people just assume that these fans need to be exhaust. Now this is not necessarily the case. Sure moving air from the front to the end or the top of the case is definitely how a lot of cases are designed in terms of ventilation but a well ventilated PC case really doesn't worry too much whether the top fans are exhaust or whether they are intake. In fact, in some situations, if you actually have the top fans at the top of your computer as intakes, you can be cooling things like the VRM, the RAM, and also to other surface mount components, helping them to run cooler, thus keeping your motherboard alive for a lot longer. So, in fact, if you actually flip those fans around and have them as intakes to cool things down, you may actually see better performance and also to better longevity than if you were to just go ahead and have it running as an exhaust side. But a lot of this myth definitely stems from the fact that a lot of manufacturers again do include this image, which is really not that great. And I guess an extension of this particular myth is also to that hot air rises, so that means things at the top of your case is going to be hotter. Now this is not exactly always the case, again coming back to this image, this has really done some problems when it comes to cooling in PCs, because let's face it, if your computer is definitely well ventilated, you shouldn't really be having a problem with, well, hot air being able to rise to the top, mainly because air coming in and then exhausting out is so much that you'll be replacing that volume of air inside that PC before it has time to heat up and then rise to the top of the PC. There's so many little fans and moving parts inside of a computer, or rather just so many fans in a computer, that the actual ability to just naturally rise up isn't really going to be there because the air is just going to be blown out of the PC case. So yes, that is actually pretty true that hot air rises and if you don't have a single case fan in your system, obviously then the hot air is going to rise, but for 99% of us that have decently well ventilated cases and have at least one intake and at least one exhaust, we're not going to ever see the problem of hot air actually rising because it's just going to be blown out the case before it even has any chance to actually rise. And again, also too, the difference is very, very little. Don't get me wrong, inside temperatures are going to be a lot hotter than outside temperatures, but the ability for hot air to just rise inside your case isn't actually going to be happening because everything is just going in and then out so fast that it really doesn't matter. Water cooling will make my PC so much cooler, not only aesthetically, but also too in terms of temperatures. Now yes, some of that is true in terms of aesthetics, water cooling is always so much cooler to look at, but in terms of actual performance, a lot of people do get drawn into water cooling thinking they're going to be able to have massive gains, and that isn't always actually the case. The first thing you do need to consider is actual room temperature. If your room is at 30 degrees Celsius, you can't exactly be expecting to go down to 20 degrees because that would be considered sub-zero or below ambient rather than Sub-Zero, um, essentially, well, meaning you can't exactly do that without some sort of fridge or freezer type of unit to get the unit cool. Actual air coolers or water coolers rather, just running general air through them, are never going to be cooler than actual ambient temperatures. Now, also too, yes, you'll be seeing better temperatures in terms of going with water cooling, but again, having the massive gains from going from 45 degrees at idle down to 20 or even 10 degrees at idle is not because of the water cooling setup. Having super low idles and also to super low load temperatures also to comes down to the type of water cooling you're using, but also to more importantly, the ambient temperatures in your room. If they're super hot, you're not gonna be seeing super great performance. Unfortunately, that's just how it works. Now, again, whilst water cooling does go ahead and help you to cool things down, a lot of the time people do get that kind of mixed up with thinking the water's doing the cooling rather than the radiators themselves. Water is just a uh, method of transferring the heat from the hot area to the cooling area, so the actual use of the water doesn't really make much of a difference at all. You can have a massive 240ml rad in terms of a water cooler, whereas over on the air cooler side, you can't really take something that's got this much surface area and just sort of mount it to the top of your CPU. It doesn't exactly work like that, which is a little bit of an unfortunate. So yes, in terms of comparing stock to water cooling, you'll be seeing a difference, but expecting a major decrease in temperatures isn't going to happen. 
More coolant equals more performance, right? Well, pretty simply, no. So in terms of actual coolant, as I did mention, the liquid is just a method of transporting the heat from the hot point, your CPU or GPU, to the cool point, being the radiator. And just because you have more doesn't mean it's gonna be more cooler. Once that liquid reaches equilibrium, you're basically gonna be the same whether you have one liter of fluid or you have 100 liters. Don't get me wrong, 100 liters will take a lot longer for a PC to bring up to equilibrium, obviously keeping temperature is lower for longer, but once again the 1 litre or 100 litres hits that point where they're at equilibrium and everything's the same, you won't notice a difference between again 1 litre of coolant or 100 litres of coolant. What's important to have is enough because you don't want air bubbles and that kind of stuff locking up your system and decreasing performance. So more coolant does not necessarily mean more performance overall. The next one is definitely one that I hear all the time. Water cooling and AIO water coolers help to keep my room cool. Now this is something that I hear from a lot of new builders and a lot of new people to PC building and that is not exactly true. Uh, basically if you do run water cooling you'll actually be more efficiently dumping that heat into your room, in theory then making that room even hotter. Radiators do an absolute good job at transferring the heat to the air and well if you're running radiators they're just going to transfer that heat to the air and the question that you do need to ask yourself is if you're going with water cooling where does that heat go? Again, back into your room. It doesn't just magic itself away because you're running water now, it does still dump into your room. So yes, your room is just going to be as hot or even hotter as it was when you were running air cooling solutions. So yeah, doesn't make much of a difference in terms of your room temp. However, you could go ahead and get yourself an external radiator and run some really long lines out of your room and sure you could get lower uh, room temps there, but if you just got an AIO or a water cooled system without external radiators, you're really gonna notice no temperature differences in terms of room. Faster fans equals lower temperatures. Now this myth kind of has some truth to it. Sure, a 500 RPM fan will be much better than a one RPM fan because let's face it, a fan running at one RPM is gonna move like no air. You're gonna be looking at like that kind of speed. Really nothing's gonna be done in terms of cooling. However, when you're comparing massive speeds like 10,000, 20,000 RPM to 1,000 RPM, you're gonna start to notice a, uh, well, lack of actual cooling ability because there's only so much that a air cooler like this guy can transfer the heat from the CPU up into the fins and also to on the water cooling side there's only so fast that the water cooler can convert the heat to the air. So running a 10,000 RPM fan or 20,000 RPM fan doesn't mean you're going to get cooler performance and this also too applies to stacking your fans. If you've got a couple fans stacked up next to each other that doesn't mean you're going to be getting much lower temperatures. Now, I'm sure someone's going to point out the O. C3D Tiny Tom Logan video where he went ahead and actually stacked a whole bunch of fans there. That was a joke. That's not exactly what happens in real life. If you were to put that many fans on a radiator, you will not be seeing sub-zero temperatures. Doesn't work like that, unfortunately. And I think even in the video he mentions that it was a joke. But a 10,000 or 20,000 RPM fan isn't gonna mean you're gonna get much better performance. The only thing that's really gonna come of that 20,000 RPM fan is, well, you being deaf, because it's gonna sound like a jet engine inside your PC, and it really doesn't sound that nice. So sure, if you're going from one RPM to 500 RPM, you'll notice a difference, but once you're up in that 10, 20,000 RPM, you're gonna see a diminished return on that, and it's really not gonna be doing you much favors. You're just gonna be blasting air through and making a whole bunch of noise. Why can't I just run my PC on LN2? Now, this is another myth, another sort of idea that a lot of first-time builders come up with. They see LN2 cooling and Sub-Zero cooling and they think, well, that must be pretty good, why not run it full time? And I always use the drag car explanation for this. Now a drag car is absolutely awesome. It can blow down the quarter mile in just a few seconds and basically rips up some world records and they're really, really fast. However, at the end of a drag race, it's going to be getting new tires, the engine's going to be rebuilt, the transmission's going to be rebuilt, the whole car's going to be pulled apart, rebuilt, and put back together. And that's exactly what happens on the PC side. And just for reference, you wouldn't go down to the shop in a drag car, buy your bread and milk, drive home, and then completely strip down that car, rebuild it for the next time you go out shopping. The repair bills would be insane, and it just wouldn't be practical. And again, that comes back to the PC side. LN2 cooled computers are much like your drag car. They go really, really fast, they break world records, 
but they basically need to be rebuilt every time you do a brand new run. If you see an LN2 cooled PC, the motherboard, sometimes the RAM, the GPUs and also to the CPU usually get chucked in the bin at the end of the event or given away or whatever they do with it because frankly those chips, those motherboards, everything is basically dead from being sub-zero cooled. If you take a look at the end of an overclocking run, I'll try and pick some images out and take them up on the screen right here but we can see that there's a whole bunch of condensation, there's a whole bunch of ice building up and in terms of actual usability of this system, it's not going to last more than an hour or so. You can get some super sweet overclocks, you can break some world records, but at the same time you wouldn't go playing your video games on it and again, just like the drag car situation, you wouldn't go driving down to the shops just to have it rebuild. Imagine the price to rebuild your system every time you wanted to jump on and play some video games. You'd jump in, play some video games, 20-30 minutes later you'd have to build an entirely new computer because that thing would have either been frozen up as you wouldn't be able to manage it as well or it just would basically die due to some sort of condensation or something like that. Now don't get me wrong, there's also two other things in terms of LNT usage such as blowtorches and that kind of stuff that also do cost more money. Not to mention here in Australia you do need to actually have some sort of license or some sort of card thing to go out and actually buy LN2, it's not just available to the public. So finding LN2 is a bit difficult, actually using it, storing it, keeping it, all that kind of stuff just is so impractical. And finally only it just kills your computer, so there's really not that much of a benefit of using it other than breaking some world records. So there we go, that is just a few of the cooling related myths that I've heard over time and yes, there are definitely quite a lot out there, but these are sort of the more common ones that I have definitely heard. But if I didn't touch on yours, let me know down in that comment section what myths you do have in terms of PC cooling and also let me know if you have any ideas for other kind of myth type of videos. I don't think I'll have one coming for a little bit, but definitely let me know down in that comment section. Otherwise, if you want to find some of the other myth videos, they should have been popping up in that corner and I'll leave them linked down below. I think I've got a playlist going on. Either way, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.